this is Daniel Ferguson with the Today we're going to do another simple part uh, just to give you some more introduction and some more functionality and a little bit of uh, the SOLIDWORKS tools that go with it. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, you'll notice I have a brand new part in SOLIDWORKS, uh, nothing on the screen right now. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Extract 3D tab on the right, um, use the Import Mesh on the left side, and I'm going to go ahead and pull in um, a quick sample of a little sprocket gear. Oops. Right in there. So what we've got here is a, a simple sprocket. We've got uh, teeth on the outside. We've got some spline uh, brooch profile on the inside. Uh, this is another example of one of those parts that would be very, very difficult to reverse engineer if you didn't have a 3D scan. Uh, but we'll show you just how easy it is to do uh, with a 3D scan and the extract 3D functions here. So let's go ahead and get going. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create the exterior uh, kind of 3D portion of it, the revolve function, or the revolve features here. So I'm going to pick a plane right there down the middle. And we're going to use the slice function to slice through the 3D scan just like that. And I'm going to hide the mesh. So I've got a uh, reference curve of the boundary of the mesh shown right there. And I'm going to go ahead and use that same plane to create a sketch in SolidWorks. So we're going to use our standard sketching functions in SOLIDWORKS to start drawing out um, all these features. Tangent line there, line, line. Tangent arc there, and line straight down. Okay, I'm just kind of sketching these roughly in the right position. And we'll go back and adjust those later. Actually, this one I'm going to get a little closer. Do a tangent part. Now, I'm going to do something a little unique. On the inside here, I'm actually going to uh, make sure I have extra material because we're going to be cutting that out later. So right here, let's see where I'm working right in here. Um, go ahead and make sure I have extra material in this surface here. Just skipping away from the line. And get that last set of curves on the bottom. Crossed, up, in place, and a tangent arc, oversized to there, just like that, and make sure those guys connect there. Okay, so getting pretty close. I've got all the, uh, I've got the rough shape kind of drawn in there, and now I'm going to go through and uh, adjust these things just a little bit at a time, just like that, and uh, get that fairly close. And you'll notice there's actually a tool. Um, in the Extract 3D tab uh, called, uh, if you actually select a line, you have the option to fit, and you'll see what that fit does. It actually takes that straight line that fits it uh, to the red scan data. We can do the same thing down here. Let's pull this kind of close. We'll do a fit. Get that close. Fit. And then pull this over here. Pull this down like that. And get that one to fit. Just like that. So that's kind of a nice little uh, feature that allows you to get yeah, pretty close, but if you want some confidence, go just hit it like that. All right, there. Um, I don't have any dimensions on this, uh, just for the sake of demonstration, but um, if you wanted to, you can go through and, uh, and add your dimensions at this time. So maybe we might want to uh, define the overall height here at 28 millimeters, for example. Uh, we can go through and define the ones that we want, and then uh, go and use the uh, the extract 3D to fit uh, the remaining curves to the right spot. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up just a little bit, get that a little closer. And I think I've got it where I want to go. And I need a center line down the middle, right there, that we can revolve it around. And there we go. So we've got our sketch. We've over-trimmed, so there's a little bit of extra material on the inside. Um, matter of fact, I might even do the outside the same. Get a little bit of extra material so we can cut that away later. And here we go. And a revolve base. Just like that. Okay, so step one was to create this uh, kind of 3D uh, revolved feature around the, the exterior of the part. Done. And the next thing is we're going to start working on the sprocket, uh, the teeth itself. So let me put that mesh back on, and I'm going to do another slice. And this time I'm going to go right through the center of the part, just like that, and pick that plane and hit the slice button. And so here I've now switched to um, the center axis, or the center plane. We've got another slice, and we're going to start working on the exterior of the teeth. And to do that, we use this as a sketch plane, 
hit the sketch function. And here we go. And so the way that I like to make teeth, and I'll just kind of walk you through this, is I like to uh, take a single tooth and then pattern it around the perimeter. And the easiest way to do that is to draw a line. And let's just draw a symmetry line. It doesn't really matter which tooth you use. Um, if you're working with 3D scan data, um, sometimes it's best to just get the cleanest, the cleanest scanned tooth. Sometimes they scan really well. Sometimes they're harder to see. They might get uh, noisy or gummy. And let's define a circle for the center to the root, the center to the tip, just like that. And let me get that a little closer. Make sure that I'm looking at the part um, straight on like that. Okay. All right. So there we go to the root, right to the tip. Put that roughly in the right spot, and now here we go. So the correct way to make uh, involute splines like this is actually to use the uh, equation-driven curve that define those in a complicated formula, and then you actually get a curve that follows it. In this case, and for the demonstration, I'm just going to use a, a, a standard spline and just kind of draw it uh, and eyeball it in the right location. This actually works pretty well uh, for the most part. You're going to get splines that are pretty close, uh, probably good enough to run a gear, but um, if you're really picky about it and you're really using that to define uh, the shape of your brooch, you're going to want to uh, use this uh, equation-driven curve to do that. But let's go ahead and pull these into the location. There we go. So you'll see, I'm just kind of adjusting this until it fits extremely tight to the original curve. Just like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and mirror that over to the other side using the mirror entities. And we're going to mirror this curve, and we're going to mirror it on this line. And you'll notice it didn't quite land on the line. And the reason I did that is because I defined a center line off the axis, and now I can go ahead and adjust this just like that until it lays right in the right spot. And this helps me for, you know, this, this kind of prevents me from trying to guess where the actual center line of that is and then use the, uh, the scan geometry to kind of make sure that that ends up in the right spot. So I now have a profile um, that I can cut out of this thing. I'm going to add some, uh, a little bit of extra material here on the outside like that. Out. And we're just trying to make sure we've got one tooth fully profiled. And I'm going to use the power trim to clean this up and make a uh, volume that we can actually uh, cut apart just like that. Okay, so you'll see I've kind of created this, this odd little tooth, and I'm going to use that to cut my gear. So let's go ahead and do a feature, and we're going to use an extruded cut all the way through the part. I want to make sure I go the other direction as well to make sure I get a little flange on the top. And there we go. So I've cut one tooth, but you'll see I've got quite a few more. So the next stage is to use the circular driven pattern, just like that. And I'm going to use the center axis. And I want to do these features just like that. Okay. Okay, and we look, we're going to kind of guess the number of teeth. And you'll notice that the yellow lines, those are the ones that are going to come out of the pattern. And the red lines don't quite match up because I have the wrong number of teeth. I'm going to adjust this until they line up. 19, 18, there we go. So that's exactly 18 teeth. I didn't even have to count. I just showed up. And we're going to cut that with a pattern, and there we go. Okay, so we've just cut the exterior tooth profile on the gear. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing for the inside. And I'll just use this exact same sketch plane. I'll sketch right on top of that. Let's get that a little bit closer there. And I'm going to use the same, uh, same process I used before. I start um, by creating a uh, kind of a, an axis there to define this circular portion right there. Uh, draw a center line on one of these teeth. doesn't really matter. We're cutting out material right there, right about there. And I'm going to use a uh, center point arc to kind of define the wrong side. Pull that in just like that. I'm trying to get this on top of the 3D scan. We'll use that scan to kind of set our dimensions and get the shape just the right way we want it. Pull it in. 
right like that. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and take a tangent arc to trim that out. Tangent arc. Take that out to there. Take this one. Do the same. A little bit of adjusting on this guy. Let's get that. Okay. Okay. So I've created my little uh, my little tooth cutout, and I want to make sure that I get. Um, some material all the way out, so go all the way to the boundary. So I'm kind of defining a little plug that I'm going to use to cut out the material. Just like that. And now we power trim and get rid of all the excess curves, just like that. And then I'll go away as well. I don't need that anymore. So I've just created a little, uh, little plug here I'm going to use to cut out and remove uh, the material from the inside of the ring. So we'll go ahead and exit the sketch and use the extrude cut feature right here to extrude a cut all the way through. Okay, so there's my first little uh, little notch cut out. I'm going to do the same as I did before. Use the circular pattern uh, on this center axis. And you'll notice that the 18 doesn't quite work, so I think there's a few more uh, spline teeth on there, so I'm going to keep kind of cycling through until I find the magic number. It looks like 27 teeth, does it? So there we go, 27, and that's it. Just uh, created that little spline feature on the inside, and there we go. Look at that. Go ahead and go back to the extract feature. I'll get rid of the slice. You'll see there's my 3D scan. Um, on the background, and there's my mesh, and there's my cat, just like that. So that was about uh, 10 minutes, uh, start to finish, and here we've got a brand new spline.